This race is like no other. It's not just physical, it's mental. The heat, the humidity, and the wind just whittle you down. It takes a very special athlete to excel here. Now year upon year at this race, the Ironman World Championships, it attracts the very best long distance triathletes in the sport. Now despite changes to the qualification system this year, we still have the main contenders ready and raring for another incredible showdown. But we are asking the question, what does it take to win here at the Ironman World Championships? What makes Kona really different is it's a world championship, so um, it's a day where it really counts. Um, so it means like, yeah, you only get a chance once a year to really show what, what you're capable of. And that, of course, brings a little bit of pressure. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, the conditions here are very different to uh, many other races, um, especially the humidity, the humidity is, is hard on the body. Um, the heat itself is not really the problem, but the humidity is what really kind of drags you down. And um, yeah, you just need that other level of fitness to be able to feel like running is fun because um, yeah, most, most of the time running is not so fun in the humidity. Um, and uh, yeah, then of course the, the elements like wind um, can be really against you, but um, I try to kind of not use it against me. I try to see it as like everyone has the same conditions and also, you know, you kind of embrace it and you kind of just hope that it will help you to, you know, also push. It's definitely hard, um, but that what, that's what makes it special. Well, Fraser, those conditions are a frightening thought, really. And let's be honest, they do not suit everyone. No, Mark, you're absolutely right. And I guess that's why we see so many athletes spending such a, an amount of time preparing for race day here on the island. But before we get on to that, I think it's about time we spend a little bit of time thinking about the paces required to win last year's race. Yeah, and let's take a look at the winners from last year and their individual times. So Patrick, he swam a 50 37 for the 3.8 kilometer swim that equates to 119s per 100. Daniela on the other hand well she maybe didn't have her finest swim she still swam at 57 27 that equates to 130s per 100 but let's be honest that's not bad by most people's standards. No, not at all. And then once we get on to the bike, Patrick rode four hours and 16 on this course, which gave him an average speed of 42.2 kilometers an hour. And Danielle, on the other hand, she rode a quite staggering four hours and 26 minutes on this course, which let's not forget beat an awful lot of the pro men on race day last year. That gave her an average time of 40.6 kilometers an hour, which, really is quite mind-blowing isn't it but it is actually the run speeds where we really get a bit ridiculous so I guess on that note Mark it's time to get this car fired up right so let's start off with Daniela because she ran about this pace for her two hours and 57 marathon which is 14.3 kilometers an hour or six minutes 45 per mile which after five and a half hours of racing in this heat is pretty impressive. But Mark's time to bump the pace up a little bit because Patrick, he ran a 241, which is 15.7K an hour or six minutes and 10 per mile. Phew, it's a bit too fast, Mark. Slow down, please. So yeah, that is the kind of paces that are required to win this Ironman World Championship. But Kona is an entirely unique race and the demands on the athletes are unlike any other at all the other races around the world. There's a lot of ingredients that go into it. You need to be in amazing physical condition. Um, I think every athlete on the start mm -hmm. line is. Hopefully you've got some good pedigree and maybe some natural genes. Yep. Um, but I think the physical work you do in the lead up is overrides that. You need to have the confidence that you belong here and that when it gets hard, you have the tools to get through. But you also need to have the smarts, the experience and the composure 
to, to rein yourself in at certain times during the race. So understandably, all the athletes are doing absolutely everything they can to arrive as prepared as possible. For most athletes, this will mean building their whole year around Hawaii and the Ironman World Champs. And that means both for their training and their racing schedules. Now in the lead up to the event, pretty much all the athletes will be focusing their attention on the elements and the conditions of Hawaii. And for some that may mean going to altitude or doing some form of altitude adaptation to improve their fitness. But for most, it definitely will mean some form of heat adaptation. That may mean going abroad and finding conditions similar or somewhat similar to that of Hawaii. I think the specific training we did uh, in in the desert with, with Ferris, we went to Abu Dhabi and trained in February uh, in the desert with really uh, hot uh, uh, temperatures. And then I did the preparations and the race in, in Texas uh, as my first Ironman. And then um, we raced also in the Philippines in 2016, mm -hmm. um, saying when I first got here. Exactly. So I, leading up into that race, I had also a lot of heat and humidity. And we saw a number of athletes heading to another Hawaiian island, Maui, to start experiencing similar levels of heat and humidity. Whereas other athletes decided to go to places like Texas or Arizona to really start to adapt to the heat that they're going to feel here. And then of course athletes can start arriving here on the island of Kona weeks before the event just to start locking in their final prep. But one thing for certain that we get reminded of time and time again here at the Ironman World Championships is that this race takes no prisoners. I'd watched so many of the races here and I'd seen so many meltdowns. Uh -huh. I'd, even, I'd seen Paul and Yubi Fraser meltdown after winning the title seven times. And you know, that was etched in my memory. I thought if someone who's a seven time champ can melt down, anyone can melt down. Yeah, this race can take experience, but we are still at the mercy of this island. It takes patience to win the Ironman World Championships and it also takes an incredible amount of mental strength and it certainly has less margin for error. Are there races as hot as, as this race? Yes, I've, I've raced hotter, uh -huh. but maybe not as long. Um, St. Croix I, I felt was a hotter race. Some of the races I did in Mexico, <coughs> but they weren't Ironman distance. Sure. I've raced races that are more humid in Thailand in Phuket, but again, not an Ironman distance. Um, the unique thing about this race is it does have the heat, the humidity and the wind. It's not a flat course, I think it's got 2,000 vertical metres of elevation on the bike. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot of climbing and the run's not flat. But then the, the X factor is it's the World Championship, so it brings together a depth of field that you don't see yes. any, any other time in the year. Like here it's once a year, in Ironman racing it's just it's an eight hour race, it's a, it's a long build up. You only race one or two a year and this is the one that everybody's at, so I think that level of competition adds to all those ingredients that you're talking about to make it just a more demanding race, less margin for it, and makes the aid stations and those things more critical. But hearing all of this really does put things into perspective. Winning here at the Ironman World Championships in Kona is an incredible feat. Yeah, no, we have talked a lot about experience and in fact there's rarely anybody ever won this race on debut and rarely has somebody done that without having been on the podium the year before. So hopefully you've enjoyed our videos. Please hit that thumb up like button if that's the case. Find the globe on screen to get all the other videos on the channel. And if you want to see a video that we did last year about Kona in numbers, you can find that here. And also thank you ever so much to the pros that got involved in this video because they shared some valuable information. And if you'd like to see our Kona tech tour from this year, you can see that by clicking just down here.